to what the Lord is doing in this hour. I align with it. My eyes are fixated on that which the Lord do it. I stand on the efficacy of God's word that declares that God loves me and shows me all that he do it. And he will show me even the greater things he's doing in this season. I yield to his visions. I yield to his indications. Abba Father, Abba Father, you are the prominent one, the preeminent one in my life. So I command my entire being to focus on what you are doing. I call for enlightenment. I call for understanding that I may perfectly understand the season of the Lord and that I might key in into that season. Abba, Abba, I recognize I'm on a threshold. I'm on a threshold. I'm on the verge of a major breakthrough. I accept it. I anticipate it. I acknowledge it. And I proclaim it. I and my family, we're on the verge of a major breakthrough. We are at the threshold of major victories. Announcements are about to be made concerning our trophies of victory. Listen to me. When you're on a verge, hmm, you need strength to push. You need strength, dunami strength. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to push you through into that new season, to push you through into that new realms of existence, into the new altitude that the Lord has ordained for you. So I want you to just lift up your voice and just begin to pray in the spirit because when you pray in the spirit, you are praying in alignment to that which is God's agenda. Kuriandaya. Nare bed the kuta geriaga daga bakodogor kusar kadoga bandi rabol de keriaga taya kabodor kushigere kadoga na rabahon de keriaga tanga bondor kutaya araba baba taka yaga daga yaga de keriaga te no roboso gerianda ya kaba kudogor kataya araba han de keriaga taya ne kurianda ya kaba kurba sar katora araba hon de keriaga taya. Araba baba kudugere ka shaka daga yigi dugere ka turu ka tangari yaga taya na rabu shete giri yaga taya katuria araba bunde yikiria giri anda yaga bakurba sar katu kabaya na raba shata yaga daga yigiria araba baba kudugere ka taya me ribo tende kuriya gasaya giri atu kubunda kiri yaga taga bakudugere ka taga bunda ne kiri anda yaga bakudugere ka ta ruta ye. Murusete giriaga ta na karaba hunde giriaga ta ya arabu tu kuriaga tanga bundu kuriaga ta ya arabu te kuriaga tanga bundu rukuto rukuta giria robotangi teria arabu ndaka shaka da yaga daga rukuturia rubande kuriaga ta ya in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, can somebody remind me? Um. Is it First Kings or Second Kings, chapter seventeen? All of a sudden, Elijah was introduced. But before then, the Bible was talking about King Ahab 
and his wife. What is his wife's name? Jezebel. And they've been committing all kinds of atrocities. And all of a sudden, the instrument of righteousness arose and said, for what you guys have been doing, there shall be no rain for three years. Church, if we don't arise to speak against the wickedness of the wicked, he will continue. Let me tell you, as a pastor, there's an understanding God has given to me. And I was discussing with my wife yesterday that there is a global agenda of hell to specifically pressure, put pressure on believers. I'm not seeing on the world. I'm seeing on believers. They were, they were sent to put a pressure to pressurize you. Another word for pressurize is to oppress you and cause your, your rest to be disturbed. He's trying to bring burdens that would not allow you to rest in God's peace and God's joy. I'm telling you, I'm a pastor. I know this. I've received several calls of people crying. So, what do we do about it? Just sit like sitting ducks and he's doing what he wants to do? Or we tell him we recognize what you're doing? Satan, we recognize what you're doing. And we want to exercise our delegated authority and decree that whatever wickedness you're fashioning against the believers, especially in our family, what do we do? We stop it. What do we do? We stop it. What do we do? We stop it. And why do you think he's doing it? Because he knows that God is about to bring you into something. Something different. Something's about to break forth. Something's what about what? Break forth. Do you know that in the oil industry, they say that the, uh, when you go and you are, you are drilling for oil, you are drilling for oil. Huh. Some people have drilled and they, they've expended billions and then they give up. They say, no, 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 this is not worth it. And somebody else comes and just digs a little and hits the oil. That would not be a portion. Our portion is if we are on the verge, then we push through. Don't let the devil distract you. My own wife was in the word distraction, but I'm telling you the truth. He can use all kinds of things to cause distraction. Pressure. There is no pressure against the Christian, the believer. That can overcome him if you are appropriating the power of Christ. So let's lift up our voice and just keep praying this way, but understand this that this is a season that the devil wants to derail Christians by pressure. There's pressure. He's applying pressure. He knows your soft point, he's applying pressure. He knows your soft point, he's applying pressure. And so it's like a season is a weight on you. Just lift up our voice and just begin to pray in the spirit. As you pray the spirit, I want you to picture the adversary being scattered. A scattering of the adversary. A scattering of the adversary. Keria, Norosata, Mareba. A scattering. Anyone that's positioned as an adversary of your well-being, an adversary of God, let there be a scattering. A scattering. Marebo shoto goriga daga bago dogoriga yigara kadoria kadaya. Marebo shoko dogoriga tanga bondo. Arubrusa tirma hatu. No kuria kiri andaraba. Arato brisa taya kade. Araba kodogoria. The Lord arise on your behalf. Your God, your God, your God, your heavenly Father. He loved you to the point that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. At this point, where an adversary has arisen to torment you, to harass you, to derail you, oh, that my God, my Father, who is a mighty man of war, great man in battle, will arise on the behalf of the church and the adversaries be scattered. <laughs> Now, Rabbi, do you agree with me that the Lord arrives? He has the ability. 
by the breadth of his nostrils to scatter every confederacy that is being fashioned against the church of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to get into that mood. I many of you have watched a shot prepared by LBC where it talks about the devil as commanding the hand of the devil to be cut off from you. Then if you watch it, okay, let me show it to you. This is the mood we need to get into. I don't want you to be in any other mood in this season because our adversary is quite strategic and his strategy is to pressurize you and pressurize me. Like you're cutting off the interference of the adversary so that you can have your peace, you can have your rest because the adversary in this season is deliberately trying to harass believers. And he knows why he's trying to harass believers because he has, he has a global agenda. It is only the church that can stop him. You can stop the adversary in your own sphere. You can stop the, the powers of darkness in your sphere. Anybody who sees that, please locate it for me. It's something to do with sit and I command you to get your hands off my affairs, my family, and all that. But let's just pray that prayer. Unite your faith. Say, I unite my faith with my brother's faith. I unite my faith with my sister's faith. And I charge the adversary. Get your hands off my life. Get your hands off my health. Get your hands off my finances. Get your hands off my career. Get your hands off my destiny. Get your hands off the totality of my affairs. Get your hands off my children. Get your hands off my family. Get your hands off me. You probably don't believe what you say. Continue, continue. Just insist. The hand of the adversary is removed from me. I do not permit the hand of the adversary upon my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bakuria basakatakarikaturia. I just want us to say this together. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In this season, there is a prevailing for me and my family. There is a prevailing for the church. The church is prevailing. We stand on the truth of God's word that declares that the gates of hell, the gates of darkness, the gates of wickedness will not prevail against the church. The church is marching on. The church is marching forward. Say it. I am part of the church. I am part of the church. I'm a member of the church. And according to the word of the Lord, the gates of hell cannot prevail and will not prevail against the church. Therefore, the gates of hell will not prevail against me. The gates of hell will not prevail against my family. In this season, say it, we are under the banner of God's protection. No weapon, declare it, lift up your voice and declare it. No weapon fashioned against me will what? No weapon fashioned against my family will what? No weapon fashioned against us in any form shall prosper. We are who? The righteousness of God. And according to the word of the Lord, it is written, no weapon fashioned against the righteous can prosper. So we arise in the truth of the word of God, declaring that the weapons fashioned against us, they are all destroyed in the mighty name of what? Jesus Christ, the son of God. You are manifesting as a victor. You are manifesting as an overcomer. You are manifesting as a conqueror. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Join your faith with anybody's faith next to you. If you're on the platform, the person next to you say, I join my faith with your faith, you can call the person's name. If your iPhone, maybe reveal your name. You probably need to talk to the person. 
I said, I join my faith with your faith. Call the person's name. Miracle. You are miracle. I join my faith with miracle. I join my faith with miracle. Because you are miracle, miracle will manifest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I join my faith with my brother and my sister. We stand in one accord and in perfect agreement. And we unite our voices. And we declare that in this season, victory is ours. In this season, we are securing decisive victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's nothing like, what do they call that when they say penalty shootout? Is that what they call it? When they say zero, zero. No, there's nothing like that. Say there's no penalty shootout. This is decisive victory. Say it. decisive victory. In this very moment that we are speaking, victory over everything that's coming against us. Victory over everything that is being fashioned against us or arrayed against us. We are victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. What's the challenge before you? I want you to point with your hand and say, you mountain before Robert Onwara. You become a plane. Say, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God at work on my behalf to level every mountain to dismantle every stronghold, to break down every gate of brass, to break down every giant in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lift up your voice and declare that in this my tabernacle, in my family, the sound of jubilation, the sound of victory resonates. In Jesus' name. Just say, I believe. I believe. I believe. This is my season of rest. Now, I, I just want to bring to our attention. I talked about Elijah. So Elijah spoke and gave a commandment and said, there will be no rain because of the wickedness of Ahab and Jezebel. But God gave him a specific instruction. Recession is coming, or you have spoken it. But I want you to go to Brook Cherith. And at Brook Cherith, I will provide for you. I'm telling you the truth. If Elijah did not go to Brook Cherith, he probably would have died of starvation. And so Elijah heard. And obeyed the instruction. And God told him at Brook Cherith, I am going to send ravens that will provide you meals in the morning and in the evening. And you will drink from the water of the brook at Cherith. For some of us, if we receive that instruction, you will argue. Because according to the law, the raven is a dirty, unclean bird. According to the law, you don't mess around with a raven bird. It's unclean. You don't touch it. But God is saying, I'm sending this bird that I said in my law is unclean to feed you. What do you believe? Will you be legalistically bound to that word? And say, no, Lord, I've never touched an unclean bed. I'm not eating from an unclean bed. Or will you obey the voice of God and go to Brook Cherith? And when the raven brings bread to you, will you be questioning and say, well, I'm not going to eat this bread because the raven is unclean. Listen to me. If God tells a raven to come to you, that raven is sanctified. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you receive from the raven. Lift up your hand and say, Abba Father, Abba, Father. any place you have instructed me to go to, any instruction you have received from me in this season, I receive it. I yield to it. I, yield to it. I obey your voice. I obey you. 
by your grace in the name of Jesus. You know, you know why you need to hear from God? Because this is like, listen to me, this is like famine season. Listen to news, they tell you cost of what in the what they call it, cost of living has risen. Some of you just go to your cities, you see shops closing down on the high streets. So at a time like this, we say our ears are inclined to your speakings, Abba Father. Do that. Say, so my ears are sanctified. I received instructions. The instructions that will lead me to the place of prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Now, this is most important. You cannot just live on revelations of yesterday. Because the time came when the place God told you to go to, the brook dried up. And if the brook has dried up, what do you do? Oh Lord, I don't know why this brook has dried up. You asked me to come here now, it has dried up. I don't have what food to eat. His ears were open to the speakings of his father. And the father said, you know what? There is a woman I have prepared for you. We need to be up to date in our hearing from the Lord. And who is this woman, church? It's a Gentile. It's a Gentile. Where is his pride going to be? How can I, a, a prophet, go to a Gentile woman? You said we should not interact with them. Not just a Gentile, I said a widow. Pastor, the things of God looks foolish. To a canal man. The way he does his things, it just you can't find to me, but that is how God works, yeah. Where's your widow? Where's your Zarephat widow that is going to feed you at this time? Listen to me. God is said to dismantle strongholds in your mind. Some mindsets need to be reset. Let me tell you the truth. In this season of famine, you need faith. There was a lot of obstacles to Elijah. Number one, it's a Gentile woman, Zarephath. Even Jesus made, food, made reference to it. Why did God not see any widow in Israel and went out to the Gentiles to provide for his prophets? Then he gets to the widow. And the widow is telling him story. This is the only food I have. This is my last meal. I'm set to cook it for my son, and then we die. If God has sent you, you are confident. Say, cook for me first. Make for me first. Rebo Seteria, cook for pastor, cook for pastor. <laughs> You know what? If he did not hack into that instruction, he would have died. I want to ask you a question. Where is your own widow of Zarephath? If your brook chariot has dried up, chariot dried up. Chariot, what did I say? Dried up. If God sent you to do something and it's drying up, Will you remain there? If you remain there, you will starve. If the pillar of cloud sets out to move, it does not matter what you're doing at that time. You pack your tent, you pack everything, and begin to follow that tent, pillar of cloud. Listen to me. The believer is dynamic in his relationship with God. Are you ready? Downloads are coming. Are you ready? You are about to enter into your season of what? Rest. 
Your next place is what they call the season of rest. Let's lift up our voice. Just pray in the spirit and say, Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. Cause me to see like I've never seen before. Cause me to hear like I've never heard before. Give me an understanding that was that I've not known before now. Perfect my understanding for this season. You know, eh? I'm a pastor by God's grace. I'm counseling you, everybody on this platform, everybody in this church. My counsel to you is be humble. If you're not humble, you will miss out very strategic instructions. Oh, I know it. Pastor, I know it. Pastor, I know. Mm -mm. Listen to me. Fresh understanding is required at this hour. Elijah knows the word very well. There are three obstacles. One, a gentle woman. Two, a widow. Three, the widow tells you, I have no food. Are you ready to overcome the obstacle? Our obstacle is in our mind, though. How do you know? Everybody under the sound of my voice, you're a millionaire. Every one of you. Yours is the ability to hear God, to know exactly how to get into that your inheritance. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you are prosperous. Everybody under the sound of my voice, there is a land of prosperity flowing with milk and honey waiting for you. How do you get there? Do you continue to do the same thing you were doing last year? To do the same year? Are you bereft of innovation? Are you bereft of creativity and ingenuity? Are you still riding on the strategies of yesterday? Look at it. High street shops, they are closing down. People like Amazon, they are rising up. Why is Tesco not closing down? Because if they took the battle to the internet, Tesco took their battle to the internet, you can shop online on Tesco, from Tesco. Are you relying on your glories of yesterday? Something has to change. Say it, something has to change. I receive fresh revelation. I receive new innovation. I receive new strategy. I receive new ideas. You are the God that teaches me how to profit. That's the word. Lift up your voice. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Lift up your voice. Pray. Just pray, pray. Pray your way out of confinement. Pray your way out of recession. Pray your way out of oppression. Pray your way out of any kind of deprivation agenda of Satan. Pray, pray, church, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Where's your instruction? Where is the instruction for you at this season? Pray, pray, pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. Listen to me. You are connected to divinity. You are connected to omniscient wisdom. You are connected to omnipotent power. You cannot be impoverished. Listen. Tell your neighbor. Say it's not business as usual. Okay. I want you to say this after me. And I want you to do it with open hearts. Just open your hearts and say, Jesus, you said in your word, because you live, we will live. Say it, I acknowledge 
your shepherdic role. Say, Jesus, I acknowledge your shepherdic role. I stand on the efficacy of your shepherdic role. You said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I receive your shepherdic role. And I declare all forms of insufficiency, they are broken. In the name of Jesus, on the premise of the shepherdic role of Christ, I call for supply. I command resources into my coffers. In the name of Jesus, I command resources into my coffers. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, you said in your word, you cause robots to lie down in green pastures. Let me ask you a question. Did he say he will make you lie down in the wilderness? He said he would make you lie down in the barren, in the barren land. Why did he say he would make you lie down? What are green pastures? The place of prosperity. That's the word. Hold on to the word. Jesus is not just your savior. Jesus is also your shepherd. His shepherdic role guarantees you perpetual supply. Something is not right. Something is not right. I will slow down and say, shepherd of my soul, I give you what? Full control. Wherever you lead, I will. You can't continue to do the same thing the same way. And you're getting the same result. It is time to stop. Step back. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father, in our lives. We have come to the Lord. Honor your word, Lord. Honor your promises. Downloads are coming. Downloads. Downloads. Down, I mean, download. God is downloading strategy into your spirit. God is downloading innovation into your mind. God is leading you into green pastures. God is also orchestrating gatekeepers that will open the gate for you. Say it. I refuse every deprivation agenda. I know who I am. Say it. I know who I am. The righteousness of God. I know who I am. The Son of God. I know who I am. The heir of God. I know who I am. Joint heir with Christ. I renounce in its totality every agenda of destitution and desolation. I call forth, say it, I call forth. Green pastures, green pastures, green pastures, green pastures. I call forth still waters, say, still waters, still waters. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have you with me? Let me ask you a question. Do you think 
that you're hearing, hear me, hear me well. Do you think Do you think that your hearing has reached its limit? Do you think that there is more to hear from the Lord? Do you think that your, your understanding can improve? Do you think that, that there are new things that God still has to tell you? Do you think you've come to the end of the wisdom of God? Do you think that the resources of God are limited when it comes to you? Do you think there are yet a lot more resources that you can access? Can I give you a scripture to stand upon and begin to access limitless resources? Are you ready? Will you promise the Lord that so as we give this scripture, you will stand Lord. upon it and you will intentionally begin to appropriate resources from heaven? Okay, the Bible says, through Christ, we have access by his spirit unto God the Father. Are you listening? Through Christ, we have access by his spirit unto God the Father. Let me tell you something. The Bible uses in that passage Christ and the Bible uses the Holy Spirit. Why is it through Christ? It is through the redemptive work of Christ, his substitutionary death, his vicarious sufferings, being crucified on the cross, bearing all your sins. That made the, gave you the legitimacy to access God the Father. That's why you can approach God the Father without being destroyed. That's why you can approach God the Father on a legitimate basis without any ear of inferiority. But it says, through Christ, you have access by his spirit unto the Father. Now, pastor, yes, I understand that Christ has made a way for me to enter into the holiest what is the practical thing that gives me the access to God the Father? It is his spirit in you. The Holy Spirit in you is the direct connection to limitless resources. Now declare it, Holy Spirit, I receive supply from you. Resources that will aid me in the fulfillment of destiny. Okay, okay, okay. You don't like that. I receive resources from you to meet all my obligations in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive res resources through your supply that will satisfy every need in my life. Now, speak and say, I command resources. You have the authority. You're a king. I command resources. I command resources. I command help. I command angelic assistance. I command supply from north, south, east, and west. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now lift up your right and say, my testimony is testimony of abundance. My testimony, testimony of abundance. Say, my testimony this month of March is a testimony of abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to also declare, in union with Christ, I have victory. 
Christ conquered on my behalf. Bible says he conquered the world. Bible says he conquered principalities and demonic powers. Bible says he conquered all the forces of darkness. Bible says he conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the grave. Faith, I share in the victory of Christ. I partake of all his victories. In the name of Jesus. Now, did you hear her testimony? Thanking God for supply, provision, even in the midst of difficult situations. Did you hear that? Is anybody else able to testify that this supposed season of famine, God has been faithful in supplying? You are. You are. I testify. Yes, Pastor. Very true. That's my testimony as well. Okay. I lift up my hand. Let's lift up our hands and say, Father, we thank you that we can all testify of your faithfulness in providing for us in this season of famine in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, your testimony encourages me as a pastor. I, I feel very encouraged that the world is at work in your individual lives. But listen to me. Where I want to push us to is not just supply of your needs. I want, to, I want us to come into the experience of what I call the land of promise. Hey, pastor, guess what? I have come into my land of promise. Hey, pastor, you can't believe it. That's the testimony I want from you. And you're conducting that testimony today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, yes, Pastor. It doesn't matter what testimony you've had in the past. There is something about to happen. And you say, wow, I've come into my land of promise. 